Hi, good evening. I'd like to welcome you to Palm Praise 2. I do thank you for tuning in and peace and blessings be upon you and your family this evening. Now, we are going to get right back into No Man Can I Hinder Me. This is chapter 15, which is entitled Celebrity Breeding Ground which goes like this. You ready for it? Here it is. Uh, the list of celebrities and other notice, notables who graduate from historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs, is long and distinguished. A little-known study revealed that only 20% of black college graduates in America attended HBCUs. However, 80% of African-American leaders and luminaries came from that tiny 20%. The analysis gave credit to the nurturing atmosphere created by caring, creative, black administrators and faculty. I was a benefactor of that nurturing, and so were the following classmates and friends that I recall with pride and admiration. Dr. Billy Taylor, jazz pianist, composer, broadcaster, and educator qualities that made him one of America's most cherished national treasures. Dr. Taylor, whose recording career spanned over six decades, composed over 350 songs, as well as works for theater, dance, and symphony orchestras. Virginia State students remember how he mesmerized us many afternoons in the college uh, conservatory with his jazz piano artistry. Dr. Taylor died in December 2010. Camilla Williams, world-celebrated soprano, the first African-American singer to sing the title role of Puccini's. Madama. Butterfly. With the New York City Opera in 1946. Miss Williams scored another first in 1954 when she sang the major role of C.O. C.O. San with the Vienna State Opera in 1954. More on this internationally acclaimed diva later. The Jordans, not their real name, were a brother and sister whose mother acquired a sizable nest egg for their education by using good old African ingenuity. Miss Jordan, an uh, attractive single mother, worked for a wealthy white family as a live-in employee for many years. A dedicated worker, Miss Jordan was aware that the white family owned a very large business. When offered wage increases, Miss Jordan instead wisely asked for received little pieces of paper with the corporation name at the top. When the value of the company skyrocketed because of the demands of World War II, Ms. Jordan unlocked her strong box to check out its contents. Hmm. She rebuffed company efforts to purchase the contents and cast in her little pieces of paper. Stock certificates to provide a worry-free retirement for herself and a comfortable campus life for
for her children at Virginia State College. William J. Kennedy III was the son of the president of North Carolina Mutual Insurance Company, the largest black-owned corporation in America. Kennedy III eventually became president of the corporation, headquartered in Durham, North Carolina. And years later, I became a vice president. Joe Hall, a premier football and track star, became an entrepreneur after graduation. He also served a stint as a Philadelphia police detective. Hall, excuse me, Hall was best known as the owner of the Postal Card, a South Street restaurant and night spot, which was a must-visit Mecca for jazz-loving Philadelphians and tourists alike. He and his wife, Ursel, a former high-ranking government official, are the parents of educator, poet, playwright, Josie Hall Hoxter, and Evelyn Wells, an international expert on education. Every member of the Hall family is a Virginia State graduate. John Borican, international track star artist who set pin relay record for 1,500 meters that lasted 25 years, was a football and academic standout and supremely self-confident. When I was introduced to him, he said, Congratulations! For what? I asked. You are shaking hands with the great me, he explained with clarion sincerity. His artistry with oils and Easel easily matched his feats in football, track, or the classroom. His portrait from a sketch of Dr. John Gandy, president of Virginia State College, looked so lifelike it could have walked off the campus. Could have walked off the canvas, not the campus. Who was life like walking like that, y'all? Oh my goodness. It could have just walked off the canvas of what he drew it on. Now, after graduation, he opened an art studio in New York City. Tragically, he died of leukemia at 29. Comparing the joys my Virginia State years to my Philadelphia educational experience is like comparing champagne to greasy dishwater. Mm. Nurtured and enthusiastic. I graduated summa cum laude in 1940. The next event immediately set the direction of my life. And here is a picture. See the picture? And I'm going to read what's at the bottom of the picture, which reads as such. Dr. Billy Taylor is shown in this 1974 photo discussing a musical score with framed singer Ella Fitzgerald. During funeral services for band leader Duke Ellington, a pianist, composer, arranger, author, lecturer, and TV personality, Dr. Taylor earned a degree in music from Virginia State College in 1942. An international ambassador of jazz, Dr. Taylor died in 2010, 
at the age of 89. This does complete chapter 15. And I'll end it with the picture right there. So it be at thy will, I'll speak with you soon. Here on the poem, Praise 2. So till next time, I want you to be well, take care, and later y'all.